Hey, I'm Lana Gloshaw, and in this video, I am going to dig deep into these questions as I teach you how to create a drawing of your subject and how to transfer it onto your final drawing surface. There's no question about it. Tracing will definitely save you time in the short run as you skip the phase of carefully measuring your subject, but it does very little in teaching you how to draw accurately. And if you are using tracing as a crutch to avoid learning how to draw, you are cheating. You you are cheating yourself because you are not giving yourself the opportunity to learn a really crucial skill and you are cheating your art because you are always going to be limited to what you can see in the photograph and what photographs you have access to. When you learn how to draw, you have so many more opportunities. You can analyze and break apart a photograph and make decisions that are going to create a stronger, more compelling drawing. I like to do my drawings on tracing paper because it is cheap, it is easy to draw on with graphite, it is easy to erase on, and it is an ideal surface for transferring my drawing onto my final drawing surface. When I start drawing, I work from general to specific. And for these particular leaves, I started with just one gestural mark that showed the direction of the leaf and the way that it was moving on the page. Then I created one basic geometric shape that simplified the whole body of the leaf. Because this composition has several leaves in it, I did that basic geometric shape and gestural mark for every single leaf in the composition before I ever came in with more precise details. And I worked out where each leaf should be from a photo reference that I took of the actual leaves in my studio. After I had the general layout mapped in, I felt so much more confident coming in with my details because now I know where everything goes and about how much space everything is going to take up. The leaf has been broken down into smaller parts from that geometric shape, and now I can go over it with another pass looking more closely at the details. This is a situation where the lighting becomes more important because I'm not just looking at the contours or the outlines. I'm looking at the shapes within the form as well, and these shapes are going to be articulated by the light source. As I get more specific in my drawing, I typically tend to slow down more and more. So throughout this process from gesture all the way to more specific details, I am slowing down. I am becoming more detail oriented. If you are committed to leveling up your drawing skills and you would like a resource to support you in this journey, I'd love it if you checked out Introduction to Classical Colored Pencil Painting. This is my three module online course and the first module is completely dedicated to learning how to draw observationally. In module two, you will learn all about values and how to construct a value underpainting. And module three is all about glazing color over this value under painting. You can learn more about this course at courses.lanagloshotart.com or you can click the link below which is connected to a 30 minute free preview lesson so you can get a feel if this is the right course for you. Once the drawing is complete and it's exactly the way that I want it, it's time to prep it to transfer onto my final drawing surface. And the first thing that I want you to do is to take your final drawing surface and put it in a safe place far away from your tracing paper. People will take their drawing on the tracing paper and they will put it graphite side down right on top of their drawing paper because it's just in their area. They'll color the back and it'll transfer all of that graphite onto their final drawing surface and we don't want that. Once your drawing is flipped graphite side down on just a scrap piece of paper, you're going to color over the back of your drawing with colored pencil. And I would like you to be intentional with the color that you choose for this transfer. When I was picking out colors for the leaves, I picked out the color that I saw predominantly in the leaf. I was using greens and reds and yellows. I want you to focus on picking a mid value color though. Really try to avoid those colors that are very light in value, like a light tan or peach, creams, light grays and yellows, because those will transfer, but they'll be so hard to see. It's almost like you didn't transfer anything at all. And for that matter, you probably don't want to transfer with black or really, really dark violet unless that is the predominant color in your composition. 
grab some colored pencils. It doesn't matter what kind. This works with literally every kind of colored pencil and color the back of your drawing. And don't be shy when it comes to laying down these colored pencils. It's better to err on the side of putting too much on so that there's plenty to transfer than not putting enough on and not getting a very clear transfer after putting all that work in. Once the back of your tracing paper is covered in colored pencil, you're gonna flip it back over, right side up, that side that you originally drew on. And you are going to hover your tracing paper over your drawing paper and you're going to place it down. Make sure that you really take the time to line it up and make sure things are centered and straight because this is going to be the composition of your drawing. Now it's time to start transferring. To do this, you could use a ballpoint pen or you could use a really hard oil-based colored pencil like a polychromos colored pencil, something that is going to hold a really sharp fine point without breaking. And you're going to trace over all of the line work that you have on your tracing paper. I use this as an opportunity to check my proportions again. So I actually grabbed the leaf, I brought it back, I went over my line work, but I was referencing the leaf and making sure that I was doing this as accurately as possible. Even if you've done this transfer process before or maybe even 15 times before, I still highly recommend peeking to see how the transfer is going. Ta-da, isn't this awesome? If you are loving what you're seeing or you've learned something new in this video so far, would you please hit the like button so that YouTube knows to share this video with more people that would love to learn this technique. Thanks so much. When you are tracing over your lines, you're gonna to wanna to give it enough pressure that you push the colored pencil that's on the back of the tracing paper onto your final drawing surface. But you don't wanna press so hard that you indent the paper because a ballpoint pen or a polychromos colored pencil can leave indents in your final drawing surface that can sometimes be distracting in your final product. So if you aren't quite sure the amount of pressure to use, just sample this on a scrap piece of paper. Color on the back of some tissue paper and try different lines and see if it is indenting the paper and if it's transferring the information. If you would like to learn more about how I add the colored pencil details to this drawing after I transfer the information over, you've gotta check out these videos right here.